our previous handout for uh, UML sequence and state diagrams also covers activity diagrams. So right here uh, we begin with slide number 28, activity diagrams. And in general, uh, an activity diagram is capable to demonstrate uh, a procedural steps, procedural logic uh, within a certain process, um, and uh, also demonstrate a workflow with possible uh, conditions uh, splitting into parallel execution and then joining back to the uh, one uh, flow at the end. So somewhat similar to flowcharts, which we're not covering in our course, but historically flowchart diagrams also had their, their place in system design. Uh, so um, the only difference between the flowcharts and the activity diagrams is the parallel behavior may be included in the activity diagram. So this is an example of an activity diagram notation. And this example uh, covers uh, order processing uh, within an organization. A major component of an activity diagram is uh, a set of uh, bubbles uh, which display the activity. So they simply briefly describe what kind of activity it is taking place. The initial node right here uh, shows where the activity begins. So this clear indication where we need to start looking uh, at the activity in this diagram. And basically we begin it uh, with uh, the receive order. So there's a, a order received uh, and now there's a, something we call a fork, uh, which has one incoming activity flow and uh, potentially multiple outgoing uh, concurrent fl flows of activity. So you can see that here, this is where um, activity diagrams allows us to essentially visualize that we can have two parallels branches uh, uh, of activities. And uh, in the future, we can actually add other parallel branches of activities uh, to, this, uh, uh, to this activity diagram. And that's where I think is the most uh, uh, usable uh, part of the activity diagram uh, resides, is the ability to have something that's called a fork and a join, where basically at the fork we launch parallel execution uh, of uh, additional activities, and then at the join we basically wait for all of the parallel activities to arrive here and be completed. So in this process order example, fill order, um, send uh, invoice, and their subsequent actions are executed, of course, uh, in parallel. So those activities may occur in any order, and uh, but at the same time, right? So something here may take longer, a longer time to complete, or something here can may be taking a longer time to complete. So these are truly parallel executions. So in uh, computer architecture, we have independent execution threads of ex uh, or threads of e execution uh, that can do this work in parallel using uh, utilizing our CPU on the computer. So the join here, like I said, it's waiting for these activities to complete. Um, and uh, it has a single uh, outgoing flow, which then proceeds only when all of the uh, incoming uh, incoming branches uh, reach this join. All right, so this is uh, something that is just uh, the basic uh, construction part of activity diagram. Now this diamond shape uh, indicates what we call a decision making or decision uh, block uh, uh, that also could create uh, uh, separate branches. But this time, the decision-making does not create two parallel processes. It's either one, of, uh, one or the other that takes place based on the decision that we make um, at this uh, place in our activity. So we refer to these branches as guarded uh, outbound flows. And the guarding... Uh, here is taking place because of the decision making that we have to uh, complete 
to decide which which uh, which direction to follow. So the Boolean condition uh, sometimes can also be specified in a diagram inside square brackets. So the guard typically has uh, uh, true or false, but it also also could be like a, a numbered outcome one, two, three, four, five. So this is called a merge, and oftentimes a merge can be just simplified to a notation like this. Just 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 gets simplified to very very simple join like this. This is not a decision making here. We just basically indicate that from this point we just continue uh, the flow to the next uh, part of the activity diagram. So in general, merge is the marking of the ending of the conditional behavior, which starts uh, at the decision-making point. So these are the summary uh, bullet points that we just discussed about the elements of activity diagrams and information about Boolean uh, conditions and guards. And uh, something else that we can use with um, uh, with activity diagrams is to uh, recognize uh, parallel processes in their dedicated swim lanes. So this is now a modified version of the same diagram that we had on our uh, previous uh, previous demo. And these activity bubbles here generally indicate what is happening, what kind of tasks uh, we're trying to perform within all of, all of these sequences of multiple activities. But these bubbles really cannot tell who is doing it. So uh, the meaning of this is that the, the, the activity diagram does not directly specify what classes in our system design are responsible for individual actions. All right, so to uh, fix this uh, weakness of activity diagram, they can be partitioned like this using partition lanes and uh, organizing uh, three, in our case, three swim uh, lanes, uh, three partitions, um, that basically uh, demonstrate um, uh, what specific uh, classes or components of the system supposed to be providing these tasks uh, and providing um, the, the implementation of these operations. So basically, if you think about it, uh, fulfillment class in the system, right? We could have fulfillment class uh, somewhere in our class diagram could have these fill order and deliver order as operations uh, specified in this class, right? So this is the, the way for activity diagram to sort of split um, those high level operations into visible activity bubbles in the activity diagram. Um, and yet they could have the correspondence into a specific class and a set of operations uh, that are available within that class. So that's just an idea of how we can uh, we can reorganize a little bit uh, uh, our activity diagrams. And so this time we can see uh, which classes, if things are happening in parallel, after uh, doing this uh, fork and splitting into individual parallel processes here. So we can see that uh, uh, certain classes in the system or uh, those could be names of subsystems or components in our software design, which will be providing these operations uh, within them uh, so that these activities can be performed uh, in, uh, as, as prescribed uh, by the, the activity diagram that we try to create. So in general, this is uh, something that uh, uh, can be effective to uh, display. Uh, parallel execution in our system and uh, what components are responsible for uh, operations participating in these activities. So in summary, uh, typical uses of activity diagrams um, are that we can create UML compliant flow charts, the logic, uh, logic flow charts uh, for parts of the system design.
uh, flow charts of course support decision making uh, and merges uh, after decision making uh, but also we can use it in business uh, to, to, to model business processes between multiple departments in the organization and uh, similar, uh, similar type of business modeling. And uh, activity diagrams, in my view, are most powerful when we need to demonstrate parallel processing happening within our system. So that is, of course, done with forks and joints uh, that are um, that are parts of, of our elements that we can use in our um, activity diagrams. So this is uh, parallel behavior or, or uh, parallel process modeling. And so that's your choice for the diagram if you need to be able to demonstrate something like this. In our case, where I'm asking you to upload activity UML diagram, for uh, elevator uh, simulation use case in our uh, elevator project design. We also could have examples of um, uh, parallel processing uh, in, in the system. Uh, for instance, uh, a user could have multiple views active at the same time on the screen. For instance, one view could be showing um, an activity uh, of the actual simulation so we can have like a elevator display uh, right here and we can have multiple elevators going up and down um, and we can have this dynamic simulation view uh, that just basically animates everything that happens in the system we can display the visitors entering the building and uh, also uh, individual floors in the building and also display visitors visiting these floors so just basically run the entire simulation in in this view and the second view that the user could optionally open at the same time uh, during this simulation uh, could be showing statistics with the number of visitors in the system so basically just statistical numbers possibly even bar charts indicating some kind of graphical information about uh, the statistics that we're gathering during this uh, simulation uh, so we can have uh, as part of the statistical uh, view number of visitors uh, um, that is being updated uh, um, that are entering the building that are exiting the building uh, and uh, visiting certain floors we can have another uh, another types of statistics for uh, for our elevators for example we could show the distances traveled by them or the number of times uh, they switch a direction right so the elevator uh, changes the direction we could record it as a statistical indicator and that could be important information for the, the for the maintenance team in the building so these are two parallel views and so basically whatever happens uh, uh, to our system objects during the animation and what happens when we update the, and display the statistics could be shown as 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 two parallel processes i suppose uh, in our elevator project design so you can think about this possibility if you want to construct um, an activity diagram that shows a little bit of parallel processes uh, this is completely open-ended it's it's up to you uh, what uh, what would you like to choose uh, to display in your activity diagram but just think about the system design and what what would you like the system to do if you were if you were to design it and uh, have a team of programmers uh, doing the actual implementation